Welcome to our review on sexual and asexual reproduction. So the first thing we need to know is a definition for a key term. And the term that we need to know the definition for is the word clone. So whenever we're talking about a clone, what we're referring to is an organism that is genetically identical to its parent. Now, if they ask you what is a clone on the exam paper, they will be looking for rather specific terminology in your answer. If you do not include that phrase genetically identical, chances are you won't get that mark. So just make sure that you do say that it is genetically identical to its parent. And at the bottom, all those little pictures are some examples of animals that we've actually managed to clone ourselves, with the most famous one there of Dolly the sheep. So if we consider what actually happens when bacteria reproduce, they reproduce asexually. Now, this just means that they're going to literally copy their DNA, as we've seen in DNA replication in our B1 topic. Then the chromosomes line up along the equator, they're pulled to the opposite poles and the cells divide. And that gives us two identical cells to the parent. Okay, They're genetically identical, therefore they're clones. Now, what we find is our bacteria reproduce asexually and they do this through the process of mitosis, which we've just outlined. So to give you some other examples of organisms that reproduce asexually, there are quite a few plants that use asexual reproduction. So some you may very well have even in your house, spider plants and strawberry plants. And the way that they actually reproduce is by producing these little things called runners. And at the end of the runner, you'll find this little plant, so sort a of mini version of the plant, that is again genetically identical to its parent. If we think about potatoes, then they reproduce via tubers. And then we've got things like daffodils that will use bulbs to reproduce. So all of those are examples of our asexual reproduction in plants. But it's not just plants that can reproduce asexually, some animals do as well. And two key examples of these are actually shown in those pictures at the bottom there. So we've got starfish and sea anemones. So they both reproduce using asexual means. So the second type of reproduction that organisms can utilize is sexual reproduction. Now the key features of this are that we've got to have two parents, unlike asexual where we only needed one. And the key advantage, if you like, is that we get genetic variation. And the reason for that is that we're getting DNA from both parents in this case. And this tends to be the type of reproduction used by most animals. So when we're considering how sexual reproduction occurs, the first thing we need to know is that our sex cells, the sperm and the egg, actually have a slightly more scientific name, which is a gamete. So if ever you see the word gamete, it's referring to the sex cells, which if we're talking about animals, will be sperm and egg. Now, hopefully we do remember that egg cells are made in the ovaries, sperm cells are made in the testes. And the way that we're actually going to form them is through a new process that we've not met yet called meiosis. So do not confuse this with mitosis and go very careful with the spelling. They're very, very picky on your exam paper about how you spell meiosis and mitosis because they're quite similar, as we can tell from that. So really learn the spelling of the word meiosis. And remember, this is what's used to make these gametes or the sex cells. Now, the key feature about our gametes is that they are haploid. And that just means they've got half the number of chromosomes in them compared to a normal body cell. So in a normal human body cell, there are 46 chromosomes. But in the sperm or the egg, there are only 23. So it's half the number. Go careful not to forget about our plants, though, because it's not just animals that reproduce sexually. Plants also use sexual reproduction. Not quite the same process that we obviously know in animals, but they do still have their male and female gametes that will fuse together. So in the case of plants, the pollen is the male gamete and that's going to fuse with the egg cell, which is the female gamete, and that's going to produce the seed. And it's that seed that will then grow into our new plant. One thing they could ask you to do with regards to the sexual and asexual reproduction is they could give you one of these comparison questions. Now, when they give you a comparison, the key thing to remember is always give both sides of the argument. 
So what I've got here for you is just a little table that summarizes the advantages and disadvantages of asexual and sexual reproduction. So the advantages are the green backgrounds, the disadvantages are the pinky red backgrounds. So if we think about our asexual reproduction first of all, then if we've got a parent that's really well adapted to the environment, because the offspring are all clones of that parent, then all of the offspring will be really well adapted too. So that's obviously a big advantage there. The second is that we only need one parent to reproduce. So there's none of this having to find a mate and going through that whole process. Literally, if it comes to the time to reproduce, then it just replicates the DNA and divides. So only one parent is needed, so reproduction is much faster. However, there is a big downside to asexual reproduction, which actually links back into our first advantage. Because every member of that particular population that came from that individual parent cell is identical in terms of their genetics, then what we actually find is that if there's a change in any of these factors, whether they be biotic or abiotic, then it could wipe out every single organism within the species because they don't have that variation. If we look at the sexual reproduction, then key advantage is that it is going to lead to variation. So that variation then allows them to adapt to different environments. Key disadvantage, though, we do need two parents for sexual reproduction to take place, and therefore it will be a much slower process. But there are some very clever little organisms in the world, and the example I've given you there are the sea anemones. And what they actually do is they don't bother with just one of these types of reproduction. They're actually going to be using both sexual and asexual reproduction. So if they can't find another sea anemone to actually mate with, doesn't matter because they can just revert to the asexual reproduction. So they always have that backup method of reproducing.